name's Jane Newsom, and I'm a friend of St Anne's Chase Town. So this week's character for the midweek message is Deborah. We find her story in the book of Judges, which is in the Old Testament, the first part of the Bible. Deborah lived in what we now know as Israel some 3,000 years ago. She was one of the major judges of Israel, a role which for Israelites meant both legal and military responsibilities. She's the only female judge to be mentioned in the Bible and also the only judge to be called a prophet as well. A prophet is someone who hears and interprets for the people the voice of God. A formidable woman. Let's first hear some of her story in the book of, of Judges. So this is Judges chapter 4. The Israelites again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord after Ehud died. So the Lord sold them into the hand of King Jabin of Canaan. The commander of his army was Sisera. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help, for he had 900 chariots of iron and had oppressed the Israelites cruelly for 20 years. At that time, Deborah, a prophetess, was judging Israel. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites came up to her for judgment. She went and summoned Barak and said to him, the Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, go take permission, position at Mount Tabor. Bring 10,000 from the tribe of Naphtali and the tribe of Zebulun. I will draw out Sisera, the general of Jabin's army, to meet you by the Wadi Kishon and his, chariots and, and his chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. Barak said to her, if you will go with me, I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, the road on which you are going will not lead to your glory, for the Lord will send Sisera into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah got up and went with Barak to Kadesh. Barak summoned Zebulun and Naphtali to Kadesh, and 10,000 warriors went up behind him, and Deborah went up with him. Well, the story continues as Deborah's military tactics are successful in luring the Canaanite army into marshy ground, which becomes even more marshy when it rains. The iron chariots, which were so strong and powerful, are now their downfall as their chariots become stuck in the mud and the Israelites are able to attack and conquer them. And we're told all the army of Sisera fell by the sword. No one was left. No one, that is, except Sisera, their leader, who escapes and takes refuge in the tent of a woman called Jael, who tricks him by offering him food and a place to sleep. And while he's asleep, rather gruesomely, she drives a tent peg into his skull and kills him. And the Israelites, led by the wise and powerful Deborah, are victorious. The story ends with the verse, So perish all your enemies, O Lord, but may your friends like the sun as it be like the sun as it rises in its might. So what are we to make of Deborah in all of this? The passage starts as it, as you know, and as with Deborah sitting under a palm tree, handing out judgments and wisdom to her people. A beautiful picture of a leader who is patient, who listens, who waits for the right time to act. She's clearly a leader who is trusted. Her general Barak asks her advice and asks her to go into battle with him. She's a charismatic leader who commands respect and is able to muster an army against the Canaanites, even though the odds of them winning against such a powerful adversary seem stacked against them. She's an encourager going into battle alongside Barak. She is courageous. A woman in battle must have been even more vulnerable than a man. She's a skilled military tactician. She drives the Canaanites into the place where their strength will become their weakness. She is realistic and honest with those whom she leads. Yes, she says to Barak, I will go with you, but you, you do know, don't you, that you won't get the glory for this. The glory will go to a woman. She is indeed a great leader. 
someone to be admired and whose qualities as a leader are aspirational. But she's no Disney princess. No fluttering of eyelashes and feeding of pretty bluebirds. She leads an army and slaughters all of her enemies. She rejoices at the brutal death of Sisera. She accepts that Canaanite women will be taken as part of the spoils of war. She lives in brutal times. No Geneva Convention. Being on the wrong side of history means either death or enslavement. Deborah is a woman of her time, carrying with her all the prejudices, the accepted norms, the cultural practices of a leader 2000 years BC. And we have to be careful not to make her into a 21st century feminist. But if we have the courage to read her story head on without glossing over the bits we find unsavoury or distasteful, but allowing her to be a woman of her age and culture, this can lead us to look afresh at our own culture. The things that we have to be grateful for and that we take for granted of our own age but also the prejudices, the practices, the accepted norms that we live with. What will our descendants write about us? What will they find appalling in the way that we treat our world and the people in it? There is a raw honesty in the Old Testament. There is no airbrushing, no softening of the bits that are difficult to read. It's all there, the good and the bad bits the story of the people of God as they gradually strive to understand more about God and the story of the people of God as they gradually try to understand what it is to be God's people and sometimes they're strong and powerful and charismatic and admirable and sometimes they're brutal and, and violent and repellent and because of this raw honesty, the people in the Old Testament come across as real people, just as we are real people, capable of acts of which we are rightly proud and acts that we would prefer were airbrushed out when they come to tell the story of our lives. Deborah was a prophet of God, used by God at the right time and in the right place to lead God's people. The God who created us, who knows us and the whole of our lives, the good bits and the bad bits, and still loves us and still draws us onwards as we in our age discover what it is to be God's people. And so we rejoice in the life of Deborah. She was wise and she was cunning. She was brave and she was fierce. She was trusted and she was feared. She was a woman of her time and she is a woman of God.